Well, hello, that's me again. Today is April 17th, 2024. It is a hump day. And let's not procrastinate, let's procrastinate, let's get to our goals, so to speak, up front. What you see here is the schematic um, the representation of how uh, scientists, astrophysicists or astronomers used to find the black holes. They didn't see them necessarily. and But using uh, the actually the trajectories of the stars which were orbiting some massive object, they often con correctly concluded that, for example, if they are uh, uh, orbit something there, so it must be the black hole, a very massive object. They didn't see it, but they knew that there was something there. This is how they actually Sagittarius A, I believe, or Sagittarius A, whatever, which is in the uh, middle of our galaxy have been uh, discovered by the, you know, calculating the orbits of uh, stars which have been moving in those elliptical um, orbits, and they were orbiting something massive. They didn't know what it was uh, yet there, but they correctly assumed that there was a black hole. And guess what? They were correct. So this is the classic example of you when you uh, look at something using some oblique type movements, you know, and you understand that, oh yeah, there's something there. And this is how very often many people who do not necessarily have the toolkit, they operate. They begin to gather some kind of the information about something which is happening around something, but they don't understand what it is yet. And then suddenly they recognize, oh, there is something there. And and we can make the hypothesis or assumption and very often, not necessarily always, but very often they are correct. Oh yeah, we point it out and point it into something. And guess what? This is what is happening now for many people who are not necessarily bad people. I'm not saying, for example, that all liberals are necessarily low lives. Uh, but I mean, many of them are, but I mean, others, you know, the same goes for conservatives. They read their own out outlets, media outlets, and then suddenly they begin to get hit with those, so to speak, elliptical orbits, which <laughs> basically revolve around something. But now this something is being pronounced openly. And just to demonstrate to you what it is, we have this one of the warmongering, one of the, uh, the most despicable pieces of garbage, which is political. And guess what? Suddenly they have their, I believe it was yesterday, they, um, they say that, oh, Ukraine is heading for defeat. And the West failure to send weapons to Kiev is helping Putin win his war. This is by some dude from Jamie Detmir, whatever, in Kiev. And uh, so he writes about this whole, which is, you know, elliptical orbit. And then suddenly they begin to say that, oh yeah, there are assumptions. Well, they're not assumptions. It already actually happened. But hey, at least they begin to uh, say things which are correct. And here it is. This is what he writes. It is not that Ukraine forces are running out of ammunition. Well, actually they do, but yeah, it's okay. Western delays over sending aid mean the country is dangerously short of something even harder to supply than shells. The fighting spirit required to win. Yes, we are entering the time of the broken morale of the whatever is left of the fourth iteration, I believe, or fifth, people can correct me, I do not really keep the count of those, of the armed forces of Ukraine and the bunch of tens of thousands actually of those so-called volunteers which have been also slaughtered there in the, uh, how to put it politely, industrial quantities. And so here he admits, morale among troops is grim, ground down by relentless bombardment, a lack of advanced weapons and losses on the battlefield. First, they did have advanced weapons. All of them are being annihilated or has been have been annihilated by Russian armed forces. And if anybody has any, I mean, doubts, if anybody still didn't understand where those orbits are, we can always obviously go to wonderful, incomparable Ray McGovern, who spoke to uh, Nima uh, yesterday, he speaks about it, in, uh, about 
tectonic shift in international relations as Russia has destroyed yet, I would say, yet, yet another Ukraine's army. You can talk, go to Nima, which is becoming a very interesting uh, journalist um, and political commentator. And you can uh, find today's interview with Scott Ritter. You can go and see the interviews of uh, 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 Larry Johnson to Nima. Those are wonderful and they are those, you know, elliptical orbits, which, you know, revolve around the massive black hole of what Ukraine has become and the defeat, which is already in the making. Actually, well, it already happened. It's just a matter of how it will be really represented and manifested. Just to demonstrate to you, when you have Sky News, one of the terrorists supporting war-mongering garbage from the uh, uh, United Kingdom, there are no normal uh, media in United Kingdom, you suddenly have that, oh my gosh, you know, five days ago they make this report how thousands of Ukrainian men are trying to dodge the conflict. I have one correction, however. It is Sky News it's not thousands we are talking about realistically tens of thousands immediate attempts to you know cross the border into somewhere slovakia hungary what have you romania but we're talking about probably hundreds of thousands and we know that there is a lot of executions they kill those people who try to avoid being drafted into this meat grinder and if you have any doubts again to understand uh, including the for example this bs which the western media uh, respond about yeah yeah we shut down 300 drones by Iran which is a separate topic but here it is you can always go to uh, the uh, this losses uh, tab it's Moscow time the famous uh, actually uh, uh, website uh, very reliable which draws directly from the uh, uh, actually Russian defense ministry as you can see yourself for today what do we have so they operate on the obviously data which uh, is fully comfort, uh, confirmed by Russian Defense Ministry. And here it is, as you can see yourself, for today alone, so which is 17th, 0424, we have about what? So plus five tanks now, there is another couple of Abrams has burned and you know so armored vehicles 33 of them today artillery and mortal 7 UAV is 191 Russians do not really make big fuss about anymore they know that there are UAVs operated by Ukraine some of them are copying the Russian Lancet drones they are subpar copies but at least they try to and uh, as you can see yourself, just today alone, 191 have been shut down. So, and uh, military personnel killed and wounded today, today, 995. And from the start of this year, we have 102,365 losses on the Ukrainian side. Again, numbers are much higher in reality, but of course, Russians and Russian Defense Ministry gives you only what they can confirm, which they can count physically. They can go literally on the battlefield as it, you know, uh, being abandoned by Ukraine because they are being pushed uh, to the west relentlessly. Today already Permomaiska have been captured and Russians are already in uh, Belogorovka. So uh, every day the, the front moves and yeah, uh, it's kind of all irrelevant about what they were talking about, those stupid ideas about Ukraine somehow, Ukrainian armed forces somehow beating Russians in 2023. But but as you can see yourself, even by very conservative Russian Minister of Defense uh, um, estimates, we have 493,863 killed and wounded. So, and uh, this is just gives you a little bit their perspective on the scale of things. So, and um, if that hasn't been enough, we are entering now into what I would call the uh, uh, period of the mopping up or mopping after themselves. Uh, people in Washington, some of them at least, they do understand the war is lost. It's, it's a catastrophic defeat for NATO and United States. We will talk about the uh, consequences of this at some point of time. My book is uh, almost ready. It should be coming out fairly soon. Uh, at um, Amazon for official release. I'm not talking about there's still some uh, representation of it there. I don't know. I believe somebody put it in there, but whatever. And the question is now that it's time to mop up. You have to understand, 
uh, in the last uh, two years, the political top and media, that's very important, culpable. They are culpable in the West for genocide of people in Gaza. They are culpable to absolutely horrendous string of the war crimes and crimes against humanity in Ukraine. And if we are very, even very conservative, we're looking at, and as I already stated, the numbers of Russian defense ministry have to be actually multiplied. And Chinese are actually... You know, they estimate that uh, it's up to 2 million uh, Ukrainian soldiers have been killed and wounded. We're at, I mean, about more than 1 million killed, the rest are wounded, and who knows how many missing in action. So we know the numbers will be horrendous. You cannot hide those numbers. This is not even Libya. You are talking about something which is happening in the heart of Europe, and uh, consequences already unfolding, and of course... Uh, you have those people, uh, including so-called intellectual. It's not intellectual, really. It's a bunch of the pseudo-academic shysters and media personalities and, you know, uh, interest groups trying to mop up after themselves to clean their uh, uh, tracks and they're creating the narrative now, the new one. For example, Council on Foreign Relations, it's uh, allegedly the, oh yeah, that's the real, you know, brain behind America's foreign policy, which basically, if you look at America's foreign policy, that pretty much you have to conclude, which is true, most of people there are imbeciles and they are really, they do not have toolkits to operate in the modern reality, which they don't. But look what uh, happens. It is very indicative how the new narrative is being created. You know that West, especially Washington, is desperate to try to convince Russia to actually negotiate something. Of course, Russia is not going to negotiate. They will actually dictate conditions on how they want the whole thing arranged after that. And nobody will care about... Uh, some fictitious, you know, imaginary leverages, you know, which United States allegedly has against Russia. United States has nothing on Russia. And uh, here is the issue. It's a foreign affairs. Foreign affairs, of course, is the main uh, thing for, you know, publication for the Council on Foreign Relations. And look what they published yesterday. The talks that could have ended the war in Ukraine, a hidden history of diplomacy that came up short but holds lessons for future negotiations. It is by the people Samuel Sharap and Sergei Rachenko who are classic actually products, including Sergei Rachenko, who actually was born in uh, Sakhalin, but uh, Sakhalin Island, but he was completely educated or educated being in quotations in in the West, in United Kingdom and uh, United States. So. You have those products, which are, of course, shells. They are paid for to create and shape some kind of narrative. And they talk about something that holds lessons for the future. And guess what? They go on and on and on trying to re-narrate a catastrophe which happened in Istanbul during the March uh, negotiations between Russia and Ukraine. Guess what? And they begin to lie through the teeth there. Apart from the fact these people, be them Sharap or Rachenka, which I will show you uh, curriculum vitae, and I, I commented on Sharap's background, they have absolutely zero toolkit in understanding military, both strategy, grand strategy of the state, and of course operational realities. They are simply humanities dumbed down, you know, shields who are paid to produce this garbage in foreign affairs. And foreign affairs primarily, as the publication lost complete, uh, completely, uh, practically whatever reputation they had, because it's now basically panopticon. That's what Mr. Putin stated. And here it is. It is also possible, they say, however, that the provisions were intended to allow Putin to save face. For example, by forcing Ukraine to repeal statutes that condemned the Soviet past and cast the Ukrainian nationalists who fought the Red Army during World War II as freedom fighters. The Kremlin could argue that it had achieved its staged goal of denazification, even though the original meaning for that phrase may well have been the replacement of Zelensky government. Uh, 
have news for Chorap and Rachenka, who are obviously shields and supporters of Nazism and Ukrainian uh, nation, ultra nationalism. Let me re uh, remind them a little bit. How about that? Those freedom fighters, do you recognize? This is one of many freedom fighters formations from Ukraine, which fought, for example, they, you know, those, oh yeah, you know, Stalin, you know, goons, you know, those Red Army people, Mr. Uh, uh, Douglas McGregor sadly repeats the same uh, uh, kind of line of the narrative constantly having absolutely no clue about the history of the Soviet Union and the Red Army but here it is, these are the guys here, these are your freedom fighters the 14th Waffen Grenadier Division uh, of the SS Galician well, guess what? It's Ukrainian National Committee. So that's your freedom fighters, including huge number of the punitive battalions by uh, Ukrainians who committed unspeakable atrocities that even SS officers tried to stop them. You want to know uh, uh, how those freedom fighters fought? Yeah, they went into Belarusian and Russian and Ukrainian villages and burned people alive raped women, killed children, and you know what? Yeah, that's your freedom fighters. This is what those two low lives, Sharap and Rachenko from Foreign Affairs, try to portray. And this is how they comment. Most of this article is garbage, of course, and this is a, just one point which I'm making. But look at this. They uh, go and start to, in, uh, I mean, they invent practically everything there. Zelensky was also unquestionably outraged by Russian atrocities at Bucha and Irpin, which is now a well-established fact that it was done by SBU and uh, by people like Budanov, who also are complicit in terrorism, as are actually special services and actually media personalities and a large part of the so-called scholarship in the West who aided and abated and inspired actually those atrocities. And guess what? So we have these two clowns who be begin to say that it was actually Russian genocide in Ukraine. It was ordered by Zelensky and his surrounding from the London and Washington. But these guys continue to shape this thing, thinking that they can convince stupid people who continue to read this rag that somehow Russia will negotiate with Ukraine. Wow! You know, so the Ukrainians newfound confidence that they could win the war also clearly played a role in the breakdown of the so-called Istanbul meetings. Well, obviously, again, you cannot explain for this Charab from Rand Corporation. You just cannot explain for anybody in Rand Corporation, including their generals, what grand strategy is and why Russia never lost operational initiative. They don't understand what operational initiative is, and the only thing they know is how to bomb the defense defenseless people. And you know what? It's just they continue to lie through their teeth and eventually they arrive to this thing that still the claim that West forced Ukraine to back out of the talks with Russia is baseless. It suggests that Kiev had no say in the matter. True, the West offers of support must have strengthened Zelensky resolve and the lack of Western enthusiasm does seem to have dampened his interest in diplomacy. But it was as they tried to portray, it was there, of course not Boris Johnson about whom they are right there and they have this audacity arrogance and again pseudo scholarship they are not really scholars uh, Charap wouldn't have guts to for example discuss me I'm not talking about this Russian guy who is complete clown you have to look up his uh, um, backgrounds and they say that yeah you know those broken down uh, negotiations may save uh, actually may help us actually to understand how we can negotiate the peace lasting peace in Ukraine well uh, it's a little bit too late for these losers and let me explain again who those losers are here is the uh, mr. Uh, uh, what's the name of it Charap Rachenka is also the clown so I already discussed this guy Charap book uh, everyone loses the Ukraine crisis and ruinous contest of post-soviet Eurasia Charap was a visiting scholar at Carnegie Moscow Center so there you go the red flag the guy probably some Shiloh asset for some kind of the whatever CIA MI6 what have you he's ruined in Russian and proficient in Ukrainian Charap holds a PhD in political science that's it he has no education and he received a BA in Russian and political science from Amherst College and so 
you talking uh, we are talking about people who can only narrate they do not have toolkit they do not have any actual applicable knowledge apart from the language that any degree from harvard whatever in political science uh, have to be discounted uh, uh, immediately and actually serve as the disqualifying factor in any conversation on the issues of grand strategy and post-war arrangement and settlement here is this loser from sakhalin he uh, actually uh, uh, wrote some garbage book again uh, and Professor Ratchenko is a native of Sakhalin Island, Russia, was educated in the US, Hong Kong and UK where he received PhD uh, in whatever before he joined whatever and John Hopkins School of Advanced International uh, Studies. United States doesn't have advanced international studies especially not in John Hopkins and uh, when you look at these people and what they try to portray, what they try to mop up, that like, yeah, you know what, Ukraine was the only one who was making those decisions. They broke off the, uh, you know, those negotiations. The West was merely kind, you know, hanging around. Uh, as I already stated, uh, listen to Nima and Ray McGovern today. And Ray, who, unlike those two losers and uh, basically shysters, he actually is a cadre, milit uh, uh, cadre U.S. Army officer and CIA, 27 years, one of the big authorities on Soviet Union. When he said that, uh, listen, this is brilliant, this is Ray McGovern and his best, with Nima and, you know, just enjoy it. And all this garbage they try to portray is only one purpose, only one objective to wash away any kind of culpability from the West, which is totally responsible for a catastrophe which affected millions upon, actually, we, if we look at the uh, present uh, population of Ukraine, we're talking about tens of millions of people who have been completely displaced. Evidently, two million people have been obliterated, annihilated on the front by Russian army. And we have terrorist activity. And it is all West. It was because of Western support for Ukraine and instilling those ideologies uh, of the, well, Nazism. There are many people in the United States and uh, Europe who admire this. They love it. And especially if it kills more Russians, you know. So, and now they try to wash out. No, the problem is too late. There are three, so to speak, parties which should be and will be actually, we already know, held responsible at the war crimes tribunal. That will be, of course, a lot of people in political top, both in the, uh, well, in combined West, let's put it this way. Victoria Nuland will feature uh, very prominently, I am pretty sure, together with other people from the highest political echelons of, uh, in London and in Washington. There will be, of course, media. Western media are, on average, they have no consciousness. These are shills, and many of them are downright, I mean, you know, in parallel with the Goebbels propaganda machine. They are the people who are culpable in inspiring the massacre and genocide across the globe. And then, of course, the third party is precisely so-called academy. Remember, there were many people in, uh, you know, even Goebbels machine or in Germany, just not related to Goebbels at all, who have been so-called scholars, who have been writing those racial theories, who wanted actually those subhuman skills. Guess what? This is pretty much applies very seriously to a large portion, not all of it, of the American and uh, uh, um, uh, British and other so-called scholarship. Many of those people implicitly called upon their Western extension and expansion at the, you know, at the basically the same methods with the same methods as the Nazi Germany, which have been completely uh, realized in Ukraine. So simple as that. And we don't know actually the whole picture yet. We will once there are, uh, I mean, I cannot even imagine how many thousands of volumes of the cases will be presented and uh, witnesses will take stands and uh, evidence. It's just whatever the evidence will be, it will be shocking. We already know that. So, and if to demonstrate to you what is happening, and what are the results? Um, first, we have these guys. 
well, Bloomberg is, yeah, it's it's laughable. But look at this, <laughs> International Monetary Fund. Uh, it's, it was yesterday. The International Monetary Fund leveled an unusually direct criticism at U.S. policymakers Tuesday, saying the country's recent standout performance among advanced economies was in part driven by an unsustainable fiscal policy. In other words, you, uh, the, this so-called performance was like you going to the market without having any money and basically buying the products there for produce from people at the, you know, IOUs. And this is exactly what is called the performance. So, but even International Monetary Fund cannot hide this anymore. The exceptional recent performance of the United States is certainly impressive and a major driver of global growth. No, it's not, the IMF said in its annual World Economic Outlook. But it reflects strong demand, fa strong demand factors as well, including a fiscal stance that is out of line with long-term fiscal sustainability. In other words, uh, United States is drowned it's dr it's not just drowning it is already sunk in that and this debt will never be uh, actually paid uh, uh uh, paid by, you know, whatever will be remaining of the uh, American economic and financial ma machine after the whole thing burst, which is going to happen very soon. And if that hasn't been enough, now we have these Europeans, guys. Oh, my God. Here it is yesterday. The European Commission now. Oh, my God. Poor, poor dears. The EU switched from one major gas supplier, which was Russia, to a network of various international suppliers. Of course, it is important to compare gas prices to when Russia invaded Ukraine, but I don't think it is a good comparison for us today if we talk to industry representatives. We are now competing with manufacturers on the world stage. It is necessary to compare gas prices in the EU with prices in China and the United States, and prices there are three or four times lower. This means means that the pressure on our energy intensive industry is enormous. It was stated by the deputy head of European Commission, Maros Sefkovic. So there you go. That's your secret, so to speak. I'll rather answer to your secret or, I mean, Europe is dying and it will die. Actually, it's not uh, uh, anymore the issue for the discussion. It's just the fact how fast it will completely deindustrialize. As the Germany shows, probably by the end of the decade, Germany will be the second world country and mostly service economy because everything will be dying out. These idiots still believe in green, uh, uh, green energy, but I mean, as I already stated, when you have a degree in political science and you have been brought up in modern, so-called the higher education in the combined West, yeah, you, you are brainwashed. That's pretty much. You have uh, what it is. And even the STEM is being affected now. And when you look at this, just, hey, hello, you know, you wanted it, just enjoy it, you know, so what can I say? There is, and again, you have to understand, Russia will talk to the United States. Russia is not going to talk to Ukraine. And Russia will talk to the United States for the future accommodation if the United States doesn't understand what is happening and the United States completely defeated. Uh, militarily, it's not, it's, it's a paper tiger. They will not be able to fight real war whatsoever. So, and when you look at this and you put this together and you see those, you know, elliptical orbits, uh, the black hole is there. And it's not only just Ukraine. We are talking about combined West, which of course makes me, makes me sad, you know? So as I already stated, I live in the United States. It's my country now. You know, so and seeing what it's becoming. I'm not talking about Europe. Europe is done. Forget about Europe. And the question here also is this. Can we do something about it? In the United States, maybe. Uh, Europe is done completely. And there is another thing, though, just to demonstrate to you. Very interesting in the divorce. I wrote about it in my blog. Uh, NASA and Roscosmos, while understanding they will eventually part ways with the International Space Station, which is primarily supported by Russia, they negotiated that whatever happens militarily or politically, and this is, I applaud this, it's kind of sad almost, they negotiated that whatever each side puts in space, man space, they will have common construction of the docking, uh, uh, docking systems 
The reason being that if some uh, emergency happens on the orbit, if the Russians will come to help Americans with, from their uh, in, uh, new Russian space stations, or space station which is being built, or Americans come to save Russians from whatever United States will be uh, putting in space. You see, it is very sad almost, you know, but it's very kind of, you know, uh, it's not the word pleasant. It's sadness because of the goodness of this intention. They still kind of hold their hands saying, you know what, yeah, we might be separated politically, but space is our common goal. We have to help each other there in case of the emergency. This is how people should be doing things. And of course, in conclusion, my gosh, you people just see how this whole uh, narrative uh, uh, from Israel about the interceptions of uh, uh, Iranian uh, missiles is being destroyed as we speak. It is complete lies, of course. We know that Iran achieved all necessary strategic uh, objectives. It put itself forth. And what can I say? We live in a different world. So this is what I wanted to tell you today, guys, uh, about. And as always, those who like what I do, please subscribe to my channel. And those who can afford, please support me on the Patreon or buy me a coffee too. And you know what? Have the nice rest of the week. And I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye-bye.